I got a question for you. What does this city know about luxury? Huh? What does a town that's been to hell and back know about the finer things in life? Well, I'll tell you. More than most. You see, it's the hottest fires that make the hardest steel. Add hard work and conviction, and the know-how that runs generations deep in every last one of us. That's who we are. That's our story. Now, it's probably not the one you've been reading in papers. The one being written by folks who've never even been here and don't know what we're capable of. Because when it comes to luxury, it's as much about where it's from as who it's for. Now, we're from America, but this isn't New York City, or the Windy City, or Sin City, and we're certainly no one's Emerald City. city and this is what we do Detroit Motor City no Super Bowls that's gonna change here in Madden 21 before it's all said and done my promise to you we can come back to this 50 60 70 how many episodes it takes into this series I'm gonna win a Super Bowl for the Detroit Lions I'm gonna bring the first title to the Motor City and as you can look here, I, I want to show this screen of all the teams. This obviously is your launch ratings. This to show you the 77 that Detroit has is tied for the second worst base rating. Only the Dolphins at a 75 are the lowest rated team in this game. And I guess, you know, that's, that's a big reason why I did pick the Detroit Lions. I've never made it, you know, abundantly clear. Unless you subscribe to my Patreon and I kind of broke it down a little podcast about my, my decision making for going into a team and why I picked the Lions. But this was probably the toughest year for me picking what team I want to use for my Madden 21 franchise. Obviously, Washington could have been interesting, but ultimately, as a Philadelphia Eagle fan, and the fact that we did have a series in Madden 19 that kind of revolved around Washington just being a disaster, I, I thought there maybe was a little too much overlay there. I really wanted to do Carolina, but our roster's still too overpowered. They have Christian McCaffrey. They got four, three to four wide receivers that are virtual at Hurts, primed. And I felt like the Teddy Bridgewater storyline at quarterback was maybe a little too similar to the Derek Carr storyline at quarterback that we had in our Madden 20 Raiders franchise. We had the Jets, who almost made the cut, but the fact that they have two first-round picks over the next two years, I thought that might have been a little too overpowered. I think I thought about the Jags for a little bit as well, but uh, go check out Bengal. You know, support the Madden franchise community. Bengal has decided to make the Jags his Madden 21 franchise. I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. So go support him. So I, when it all comes down to it, I am not mad whatsoever about Detroit. Thinking about it like way back, it would have been like February, March, around, you know, getting around draft season. That's when you start thinking. The wheels start turning about what team I want to play in Madden 20. And Detroit was always in that conversation. So... Today, we're going to meet the roster, see what's going on, figure out just how hard it's actually going to be to win a Super Bowl, and, and then we're going to get into it, man. Detroit Lions Madden 21 franchise is here. If you're hyped for it, smash that like button, subscribe. If you've never watched any of my Madden franchises, they are unlike any other franchise you're going to find on YouTube. I kind of pride myself on that, so get along for the ride. Buckle up, Motor City, let's go. So before we do sliders or anything like that, let's meet the roster. Let's meet our roster. I'm, I already have re-recorded this like once or twice because I've gone on for like 25 minutes about the roster. And I don't want to go that long because obviously we're going to revisit different topics. So we'll do a somewhat light version of breaking down this roster. Why we picked Detroit, what we're working with in Detroit to bring that Super Bowl here. And it all starts with Mr. Matt Stafford. 32 years old, 83 with a star dev. I will say right now, the most important thing on the offensive side of the ball, year one, is to get Stafford top 10 in yards, top 10 in touchdowns, and get that dev trade up to a superstar so he doesn't have a brutal regression in this first offseason. Quarterbacks, 
I mean, maybe it could have got tweaked here in Madden 21. I have my doubts. It'll be interesting to see, but that regression is definitely the biggest where I have with the quarterback spot. I mean, you look at Stafford, cannon of an arm, 94 throw power. Accuracies are all very, very good. Super underrated quarterback. I think if you're looking over the last like 10, 15 years, who's the most quarterback to not go on a Super Bowl run? Maybe it's Matt Stafford. I mean, you look at the stats last year in only eight games, 2,500 yards, 19 touchdowns, five picks. You know, you can't, you can't, but you can just like double it to see him, you know, if he played a full 16, what kind of stats he would have. But even just kind of ballparking, he would have been 42, 4,500 passing yards, 35 touchdowns and like 10, 11 picks. That's a guy that's like, if that Detroit team was able to, you know, scrounge up some more victories, he could have been in the MVP conversation. So I definitely think in my money, uh, he would have been an MVP candidate last season if he stayed healthy. One of the most underrated players in the NFL, and I think a top 10 quarterback. So, I mean, that's a big story right now. Can I salvage Matthew Stafford's career and, and find a way to get him to go with the Super Bowl? Hopefully he doesn't regress too bad and we can actually find out because the quarterback room behind him is not good. Sooner than later, we are going to have to draft his, his assumed heir. I don't know if it will be our first draft, but within the first two drafts here in this Lions franchise, we do need to add some youth to this quarterback room that has some upside. Sorry, David Blau. Running back room, carry on Johnson, 23 years old, 82 with a star dev. Biggest thing with him is, I think it's all the potential in the world. Complete running back power, 82, 80 elusive. I mean, you look at the stats outside of his speed, which is not great, and we don't have a lot of terrific athletes at the running back room here in Detroit, but all the stats, the trucking, the spin, the juke, change of direction, it's all very well-rounded, all in the 80s. Problem with him is availability. The best ability is availability. Carry on Johnson is consistently injured, which kind of sings, because if he, he played a full 16, remember there's that meme it's not really a meme, it was a fact. Like Detroit went X amount of seasons without a thousand yard rusher. I think Carrion Johnson gives you a full 16, he can get you a thousand yards, but he's been unable to show that he can play a full 16. So Detroit in the second round got, in my opinion, the best running back from the 2020 draft in DeAndre Swift out of Georgia. 74 with a hidden dev, scheme fit, elusive back 74. Again, not great top end speed, but very well rounded stats. Eight, carry and ball carry vision, spin, juke, he can make you miss in open space. 70 catching is solid. He's definitely going to be heavily featured in this series. We're going to have a running back by committee, but hey, uh, it's it's a good it's a good issue to have. We have Bo Scarborough who filled in nicely. I may be op, you know, open to moving him to fullback, just just to make you know just to find a way to keep him on the roster because he does bring some great power to the team. Because as we look, we have Ty Johnson who actually is a solid athlete at only 22. I don't want to get rid of him. But Jason Huntley was one of my sleepers from the 2020 draft. New Mexico State receiving back, 66 overall. 90 speed, 92 acceleration, 81 carry, 85 change of direction. And you look at the catching, 72 catching, 71 short route running, 70 catch in traffic, 72 spec catch. He can offer a little bit in the return game. I think there's a chance, a longer play, but he could be that theoretic type running back in our backfield. So just kind of previewing it before we see how the, the preseason and all that stuff goes. I think Johnson, Swift, and Huntley for sure are like my three running backs. And then obviously with Scarbo here, we could consider moving him to fullback and replace Nick Bodden. I definitely do want a fullback in my offense. Wide receivers, we have Kenny Galladay, superstar dev. He's gonna, I think he's gonna be the star on the offensive side of the ball of this rebuild. 6'4", 213, 86, superstar dev. Physical wide receiver, good speed, 91 catching, 95 catching traffic, 94 spec catch, 93 jumping. You got the 85 stiff arm. I really do think, and I've talked about this on the channel before, my favorite wide receiver probably of all time is Andre Johnson. I think Kenny Galladay, is, is maybe not a perfect clone, but as close to an Andre Johnson style receiver that we have in the NFL. And you look at the stats, I'm pretty sure he led the league in touchdowns last year with 11, 65 catches, almost 1,200 yards, an absolute beast. We're going to force feed him. If you like what we're able to do in Madden 20's franchise with Derek Carr and Antonio Brown, I want to replicate that with Mr. Matt Stafford and Mr. Kenny Galladay. We have a good wide receiver too in Marvin Jones Jr. He's 30, so the regression might be pretty harsh coming, but he's still an 85 star dev wide receiver. Um, good wide receiver two probably could be a wide receiver one on a lot of teams in the NFL 90 catching 90 catching traffic 96 spec catch 92 jumping we're definitely going to have an opportunity here to make some highlight reel plays he's coming off a year where he had 780 yards and nine touchdowns I mean remember when this guy came in he was their big free agency signing the year or the offseason right after Megatron retired so he essentially came to Detroit as like well Megatron's gone and we spent a lot of money bringing him over from Cincinnati be Megatron and I mean he's done a pretty really really good job I think for the Detroit Lions 
Uh, we have Danny Amendola as a slot wide receiver, 34. I mean, the aggression is going to be huge, but at least for year one, he will be our slot wide receiver. If we can find a way to make the playoffs, I mean, that's where Danny Amendola does shine. But for me, when I'm looking at wide receiver, especially that slot spot, I'm going to go down the depth chart here. I mean, you've got Allison, Marvin Hall, but the rookie out of Wisconsin, Quintez Cephas, 6'1", 208, physical wide receiver, 67 overall. I think he might be our long-term play at the slot spot. Obviously not... Not an A-tier athlete, but 84 catching, 83 catching traffic, 89 jumping. He's very, very physical. Go look at Quintez Cephas in the bowl game against Oregon. Destroy, absolutely destroy an open field. Troy Dye. And didn't juke him, didn't break his ankles, ran right through him. Absolutely just, just destroy him. You add that physicality with the physicality we have from Kenny Galladay. I mean, look at We're going to be putting dudes. We're going to knock them back, Rosie. We're going to look like Mike Allstud out there with Kenny Galladay. And Quintez Cephas just running right through, guys. I'm very, very excited, optimistic. Definitely one of the strengths of this team is the wide receiver room. Tight ends, we have TJ Hawkinson, the first round pick from a year ago, 77 with a star dev. I'm pretty sure, like, his first game, he had like 100 yards and he kind of peaked. But tight end is one of those positions that does take a little bit of an adjustment period going from college to the pros. I uh, saw a tight end, stats look good. He's not one of these like glorified wide receivers playing tight end, like, you know, like Evan Ingram or something like that from the Giants. Uh, he can block. And tight end is one of the positions for whatever reason. Over the last couple of battles, I've not been able to draft well. I always like, and if I do draft well, it's like a blocking tight end that's kind of useless. So I'm glad that we're gonna have TJ Hawkinson here for a very, very long time. Outside of that, we get Jesse James, Hunter Bryant from uh, Washington, another guy that actually could be a candidate to move to fullback. Maybe we could do that, but anyway, you know, you can't really the tight end room. It's TJ Hawkinson and really everybody else. Offensive line, it's you know. We got Taylor Decker here, 74 star dev. He's not going to be a turnstile. Maybe hasn't lived up the hype as he was a former first round pick out of Ohio State. Uh, but, you know, he's not bad. Service, you know, I would say he's better than serviceable. He's a solid left tackle. I don't know if I'm going to have to, you know, I don't know if I want to pay him. I, I don't, I, I, looking at that contract, maybe it's sooner than later. He's going to have to get uh, some money. Yeah, he's on a one year, final year. So, I mean, let's, let's see. Let's wait and see. Uh, guard is not is, is a weakness of this team. Guard, across the board, there's not much there at left guard. No dev traits. The rookies aren't particularly great. Joel Dahl might be our starter, 68 normal. Center's solid. Frank Ragnow. Uh, was he a first or second round pick? I feel like he was a first round pick two years ago. Yeah, 2018. He's a beast. Absolute powerhouse. Brick shithouse at center. 24-83. I think he has a guy definitely be potential to be in the 90s before it's all said and done. Good anchor to have on the offensive line. Right guard, uh, I actually made a, a change. I was surprised that it actually went up. I took Terrell Crosby, who's like a 64 right tackle, slid him in a right guard. A little bit better, a little bit more higher ceiling because it would be less than ideal going with the rookie Jonah Jackson out of Ohio State. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I'm not playing your son. I just can't do it. Can't have that rookie go out there. So we'll go Tyrell Crosby. Out of Oregon, it will be our starting right guard. But generally, this interior of the offensive line at the guard spot, we're going to have to draft well or hit on free agency because it's not good enough. Uh, right tackle, we got Big V. They paid Big V insane money to come over from the Philadelphia Eagles. And Big V is, in every sense of the word, bang on average tackle. He's not a bad tackle. He's not a great tackle. He's had some great games. Pretty much shut down Everson Griffin in the NFC Championship game of our Super Bowl year. But... That is a lot of money. That is a very ugly contract that we're going to have to deal with and navigate here with Detroit. I'm not looking forward to it, but hey, at least we have a member of the Super Bowl winning Philadelphia Eagles to try and you know turn this line team into a wing and organization. Defensively, uh, I don't know about the identity of my defense. I don't know if I want to be committed to a 3-4 or not. I mean, I'm pretty sure they run a multiple front in Detroit. Like they do some 3-4, some 4-3. But I, I really do think this roster, especially the front seven, is built for a 4-3. And I personally, like when I'm playing defense, I like to be a 4-3. So that'll be something I'll make the decision on before this episode is done. Um, I just, uh, it, it just makes sense to switch there. You'll see in a second, especially when we look at the outside linebackers. But looking at the front, uh, we have Deshaun Hand, 24-78 with a star dev. Obviously, there's a high ceiling there. Pretty solid run stuffer. 92 strength. Very, very powerful. Good block shed. Good tackling. I don't know what he's really going to offer in way of sacks. That's why it's so intriguing. 6'3", almost 300 pounds. Kick him in a D-tackle if we go to a 4-3. Maybe that will maximize his talent just a little bit. Uh, right defensive end, we have Trey Flowers, who was a big money free agency get for them coming over from the New England Patriots because there is some, I don't know, buddy-buddy going on between the Patriot and Lion organization. A lot of 
moving parts, moving pieces between the two teams. But Trey Flowers is solid. I mean, as an Eagle fan, it reminds me a lot of Brandon Graham. He's a guy that does a lot of the things that don't necessarily show up on the box score sheet very, very well at an extremely high level. And he's still, last year, I mean, stats across the board, definitely usable. I think he had seven sacks last year leading the team. I mean, that's consistent. You look at his contract, you see a guy getting those kind of sack numbers, you're probably like, why? But he does everything else. He makes everyone else on that D-line around him better. The intangibles and stuff like that. And plus, I use the D-line, so maybe we'll be able to get Trey Flowers his first double-digit sack season. Aquara is solid, but I'm actually more interested in his brother, the rookie, Julian Aquara, out of Notre Dame. Especially if we do go to that 4-3, I might be inclined to make him a, a starting defensive end. 69 overall, speed rusher, great athlete. 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 81 strength, 73 finesse move, 79 pursuit. I think he could be a really, really fun user. 6'4", 250. Definitely one to keep an eye on, especially if we change the defensive scheme. D-tackle, another former Patriot here, and Danny Shelton, former first-round pick of the Cleveland Browns. He's a run stuffer. Pure out. I think he's going to be a guy. Don't have to worry about usering him. 93 strength, 85 tackle, 80 blocks shed. The play record awareness is high. So he's just a guy. Let the computer do his thing, and I'll, I, I can be like a Trey Flowers or something like that. So that's him. Um, outside of that, there is not much at D-tackle. Again, if we do switch to a 4-3, moving Deshaun Hand inside the D-tackle is probably the best way to maximize our defensive line. Outside linebacker, we do have Jamie Collins. So there we go. We have a guy that definitely can play a 3-4 outside linebacker. 83, obviously at 30, the regression is definitely looming over his head. But the stats are very good. Very good athlete. 88 acceleration, 84 speed. We got 91 pursuit, 81 tackle, 88 play rec, and 90 awareness makes it so I feel comfortable, especially playing all pro, all Madden, whatever we end up deciding to do, that the computer will be able to, you know, just not be completely oblivious, oblivious with those stats. So we have Jamie Collins as one solid guy. Inside, we have Jelani Tavai out of Hawaii and Jared Davis, 23 and 24. Young linebackers that still have a little bit of a ceiling. Obviously, Gator bias. I still want Jared Davis, who definitely hasn't been as good in the NFL as he was at Florida. We still got a chance. We still got a chance to make him into a very good linebacker. And Tavai, last year as a rookie, was kind of a surprise pick for me because I was like, well, why did they draft a linebacker? They have Jared Davis. But I mean, he saw it. 79 tackles as a rookie, two sacks, and an interception. So there's a ceiling. There's definitely a solid ceiling there for our middle linebackers. And then right outside linebacker, we have Christian Jones, veteran, you know, been playing in this division for a very long time. I'm pretty sure he started with the Bears. Now he's here with Detroit. Serviceable. You know, he definitely fits the scheme. What do you have last year? This ah, two sack. It's not that good. It's not, it's not great. And then you look at this, we have a 230 pound and a 220, I think, Kilbers converted safety. Like these are not three, four outside linebackers. Everything about this front seven to me screams. Switch to a 4-3, probably going to do that. Moving at the secondary here, we have Justin Coleman, solid slot corner, 85 scheme fit with that star dev at 27, so still has at least two years before we have to worry about regression. He's really good. We have Desmond Trufant coming over from the Atlanta Falcons, 84 star dev, also a slot, but at least with that six-week length, I'll probably put him on the outside. Um, you know, It definitely lessens the sting of Darius Slay trade to the Philadelphia Eagles. And that is good we have those extra assets that the Eagles traded for Darius Slay, the big corner, the man of the hour, Jeff Okuda out of Ohio State, 76 with that hidden dev, almost a scheme fit if you just want to make him a slot, but uh, uh, very, very high ceiling. I think he's going to be a guy that will be our Darius Slay in three, four years, 90 speed. We got 77 zone, 81 press. The agility is good. His footwork is insane. 91 jumping. Uh, he's got to start on the outside. I think our outsiding corners right now will be Trufant and Okuda with Coleman in the slot. Uh, Robert, solid depth guy. We got four twenty-five seventy-one. Uh, Amani Owarie, I think he has some upside there as well. Seventy-one out of Penn State, going into his second season. Uh, again, not a lot. Of, man, this is just generally not a super fast team. You know, we're not seeing any like ninety-four, ninety-five speeds really at any position. But we have a lot of depth here at corner, and I'm very excited to see what Jeff Akuda can do in his rookie season. Free safety with another expatriate, Duran Harmon at twenty-nine eighty, serviceable. Pretty much a glorified band into that free safety spot. Uh, one thing I do want to consider potentially is taking someone like Will Harris, who's a really good athlete, 69, entering his second year at a Boston College. I think a guy like Will Harris, I mean, maybe we can have him be a free safety. Might not play a lot this year. Again, it's not like a rebuild where I have to, like a realistic rebuild video where I have to get my young guys on as soon as possible. This, this could be a little bit of a long play. So I do want to move Will Harris to free safety. Maybe he can learn a thing or two and eventually... 
you know, maybe next year be like a 73 and have a chance to start and earn that role as our starting free safety. At strong safety of Tracy Walker, who I think was the only player that got over 100 tackles last year on this defense. Yes, 124 tackles, one interception at a Louisiana Lafayette, 77-25 with a star dev. Just a well-rounded player, speed solid, 76 zone, 76 man, good coverage ability, can tackle as well. Uh, I definitely think if there's a chance that someone who can kind of come out of nowhere on this defense and develop into a real, real star for the Detroit Lions, I think Tracy Walker has a chance. But needs to do it sooner or later. He's 25. It's not like he's 22, 23. We need to happen this year or next year. Special teams, we got Matt Prater. You know, really, really good for someone like me. Maybe the best kicker on YouTube. 97 kick power, 90 accuracy. I can work with that. And then at punter here, we have Jack Fox. Nothing too special. I might actually try to get a different punter. But that is our Detroit Lions roster. Who are you the most excited to see in this year? I, I think a lot of people want to see Jeff Okuda. Maybe what we could do with Matt Stafford. I think for my money, it's going to be the Kenny Galladay show. I think we are absolutely going to destroy with Kenny Galladay on offense. But, you know, defensively, I think before this episode, we're almost done anyways. I might make that switch to a 4-3 and see what that defense is going to look like. So for settings and all that stuff, I'm always just going to wait for the gameplay settings. We'll just go default for the time being. I will go down to the injuries and we'll make the injuries 10. I, I feel like I, you, know, you don't want crazy injuries right off the bat. But until some good sliders come out, I'll be keeping an eye on Operation Sports. Matt 10 sliders were the ones I used last year. We'll just keep it at 50. But for the XP sliders, because not a lot was done to franchise mode we will keep our xp sliders what we were rocking from you know is based off of t-dog sliders again on operation sports with some of my little personal tweaks but these will be your xp sliders that we have obviously tight ends need some help offense alignment needs some help defense alignment needs some help but generally speaking it, it's pretty much you know not too much different than default across the board and i'm pretty sure how like t-dog comes up with these sliders these sims like 25 years and and, and kind of rates all the different types of progression to get the numbers where they need to be so I definitely trust these sliders, and I recommend you guys use them as well. I think we'll start on All Madden. I, I have no uh, ego about it. It is not fun on All Madden. We'll find out in the preseason, and we can just knock it down to All Pro for the time being until we get some sliders. It will always be on Sim. We'll have all these other things on. Coach Firing, I guess. I guess we have it on. I mean, it's one of those things. I, Coach Firing, I want it on to be realistic, but there's... We'll, t we'll put on CPU only because when you get fired, you never you just retire. You never actually get a chance to go somewhere else. That's another thing that if they did add coaching carousel, offensive defensive coordinators. Well, it's like if you get fired as a head coach, you just get a bunch of offers to be a coordinator somewhere. It would add that much more life to your franchises. Uh, we'll turn Relo off for the time being. Injuries will be on. 12-minute um, quarters is what I usually rock. Usually between 10 and 12, and then everything else will be on auto or manual. You know, it's good. I do want to peek. This is a feedback, a feedback opportunity for you guys in the comments. Peek and look at the trade block. Obviously, I don't have any position, at least for like players on my roster that I want to move in particular, but at least seeing who's available at positions that could be of interest to us. Uh, I think when you look at O-line here, I mean, you got 74 guard here on the Bills. Felicia, I mean, he's 28. That's a, that's a limited ceiling for sure. But going to the defense, especially if we do switch to that 4-3, someone like Sam Hubbard, 25, 75, has a star dev. We can make a play for that if we didn't want to gamble on, say, the rookie acquire out of Notre Dame. Uh, obviously, you get a lot more of a for sure thing here in Sam Hubbard. Um, beyond that, I mean, Tana Passano was a beast for us in pig slips, right? D, uh, D tackle, Tyquan Lewis has a really, really good skill set. But again, if we do go to that 4 3, we obviously would be kicking Deshaun Hand in. Probably wouldn't need a D tackle. Josh Sweat's a beast from the Eagles. Really, really good skill set. 85 speed, 88 acceleration, uh, 77 finesse. Ooh, I'm actually so we have two really good options at DN if we wanted to make a trade between Josh Sweat and Sam Hubbard. And Sweat might be that much more easier to trade for because he doesn't have that dev trait looming over his head. But I guess obviously we'd have to have something that Philly would want to trade for him. Um, again, we're 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 okay with our linebacking core, I think. But again, when we switch to the four three, might need someone. So there's some guys for sure. Shaquem Griffin. Cole Holcomb, Kaiser White, that definitely fit that style of linebacker. Blake Cashman is actually very, very good. We highlighted him in trade targets video. Second year player, 70 overall, 89 speed, 90 acceleration, 83 pursuit, 84. I really want that guy. He, we could maximize him on our defense. He could be, you know, a right outside linebacker, something like that. So he's definitely another trade target I think we should consider. Uh, Lorenzo Carter there, I mean, he'd be more so a D end in our scheme. Going to the secondary, Sidney Jones on Philly. Strap LeBlanc from Philly. 
pretty much Eagles wanting to get rid of all their corners. Slim Jimmy from the XFL series. Uh, we're good at safety, I think. Oh, no. How are you going to put Johnson Gardner Johnson as an available option? I think that might be too overpowered of a trade to make, but it's out there. You want, you want me to bring back a god from Madden 20? He's on the trade block. We could try to make a deal happen. Crookshake's also really good value. One, another really underrated player. So if there's anyone in particular you think we should make a trade for, make your, make your play for them in the comments. If you really think passionately we should try to make a trade for any of those players we highlighted, let me know. I might do my best. We'll start our training camp with the three players that we really want to focus on. It's pretty obvious for sure. Okuda and Swift, the two rookies with the hidden dev. Last spot was kind of up for grabs. I think for right now, I want to get TJ Hawkinson up into the 80s. So those will be the three guys that get all the attention here early on in the Lions franchise. All right, let's, go, let's, see, what this, let's see what this defense in a 4-3 kind of looks like here. Just before we even get into the pre... Like, I'm pretty sure I want to make that commitment to just going there. We'll keep... Oh, my God. They just don't even want to test Tavai here. He's one of those guys. Hawaii, they don't, they don't take it off in practice. He's going to be destroying dudes, blowing guys up. Pretty much staying in course. Get the sack. Covered sack, please. Thank you. It's a fumble. From the defense to Sean Hand, run it all the way. Get me that touchdown. I think for sure this is the play to be had. We will be switching to the 4-3. I'll show you the roster moves, and we'll wrap this episode up. See, my, my theory was right. We're running a 3-4 under, 84% scheme fit. And I was like, man, this defense seems like they, I mean, they're a multiple front, but seems like a 4-3. You know, and as you go, we got 84% on 4-3 cover 3. We got 92% just on a base. 4-3. So we'll go base 4-3. I'll go with the playbook that I am most comfortable with, which is... Why are these not in alphabetical? But the Doug Peterson, Jim Swartz playbook for our 4-3 defense. So in switching to the 4-3, here are the changes that made it. Every change was a positive. Sean Hand went from a 79 defensive end now to an 81 D tackle. We'll take Aquara. I'll go with the younger Aquara, the rookie at Notre Dame. Well, right now, again, we have those options available for us on the trade block if you guys think we should make a move. But Aquara will be one of our starting DNs. Uh, we had to take Jared Davis from middle linebacker to outside. He went from a 70, what was he, 70, 71? Now he's a 74. So maybe we wouldn't have to make a move for like a Blake Cashman or something like that. And, and we're good at linebacker. So that's great. A great little uptick to the overall there. Uh, specialist, like I said, we have Coleman in the slot. We'll have Collins, Flowers, and Aquara on the sub D line. Sub linebacker will be Tavai. Swift will be our third down back. Carry on Johnson, the power back. We have Amendola and Cephas at slot wide receiver. So there you go. There is your introductory episode for the Detroit Lions Madden 21 franchise. Again, I hope you guys are excited for it. I am very, very excited to get into this get through the preseason, get into the 2020 regular season. So as always, if it's your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to hit 150,000 subscribers sooner than later. Smash that like button. Likes help in the old YouTube algorithm. Likes definitely go a long way too into showing me that you guys are really pumped and excited for the videos. So do all that typical YouTuber stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with maybe our second Madden 21 rebuild. I don't know yet, but thanks. See you guys later. Peace out. Bye.